Another spring training loss for the Tigers. We're going to talk about, uh, there's actually a lot to take from this game against the New York Yankees. And then we're going to preview Matt Manning. All today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers. Your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team, every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. Thank you for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. All righty, we got another spring training recap show for you. I apologize, uh, first and foremost, for the audio yesterday was pretty much unlistenable so uh, i hate doing that i didn't realize it at the time obviously Uh, i'm not home as i said earlier i'm not home for the week don't have my internet and whatnot and i don't know what happened so i'm trying to make adjustments trying to accommodate trying to do better because i don't like putting like literally unlistenable was what yesterday's was so I, i greatly apologize for that um, and I'm very aware and trying. I'm trying to to, uh, to to fix it for the remainder of the week, at least until I can get back home. So um, bear with me. But I uh, attempts are being made. I, I promise you, and I truly am uh, sorry because I yeah hate doing that. Okay, let's talk about spring training. Okay, I still got the sun too. What a disaster. Um, we we actually have a lot to take from this game against the New York Yankees, I think. Uh, this was a loss to the Yankees, 6-3 to three loss on Tuesday afternoon. I think the place to start is Michael Lorenzen. Michael Lorenzen's injury update was kind of like, hey, there is no update. Have fun with that. Uh, was I, I mean, like, seriously, that, that pretty much was. Uh, A.J. Hinch was asked about it. His quotes were, I have no idea if Lorenzen is going to be able to make his – last spring start and we'll survey every option we can or everything we can as far as like alternatives if he can't um and then the like PR report said that he will progress back to baseball activities as his symptoms allow so that means nothing to anyone uh we can just call that kind of what it is that that doesn't mean anything not a single one of those quotes means absolutely anything we have zero timetable we have z- <laughs> we don't know anything and i'm not saying that that's the fault of anybody they probably don't know much either um but we don't know the severity of it i, I, I guess apparently it could range from anywhere to he can make his next spring start and be more than fine by game two or three of the regular season or four, I guess, depending on what your opinion of the rotation is going to be uh, all the way to like, he's going to miss his first start in the regular season, uh, if not more. So like, I, we don't know, we have no clue, but that's where we stand right now with it. Um, Spencer Turnbull pitched in this baseball game and he's so fun to watch. He's so fun to watch, especially that that was a Yankees lineup that had a lot of their starters in it. Aaron Judge played, DJ LeMahieu played, uh, IKF played, Anthony Volpe. Anthony Volpe, man, if you're not a big like prospects person, um, I I would look into Anthony Volpe. He's going to be a problem for that team. Uh, I didn't, yeah, I, I I want him to make the team out of camp as a baseball fan for like just to have the Yankees. Kind of have uh, uh, one of the best prospects in all of baseball over at shortstop, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but he played in this game, looked pretty solid as well. Uh, but Turnbull mowed through, for the most part, this Yankees lineup that, again, was relatively close. Not spot on. Bottom their lineup a little bit thinner uh, than it will be on opening day, but uh, very close to their opening day lineup. And uh, he, he looked fantastic. He went four and two-thirds, one hit, one run, one walk, three strikeouts. Uh, the only hit was a solo home run to Josh Donaldson. He had two homers in this game. Uh, the one off Turnbull a little bit further than the second one he would hit uh, later in the game off of Will Vest. We'll talk about him in a second. Um, but, yeah, I mean, th- this was a really solid start by Turnbull. I, I was pretty pumped. Uh, you know, I-, I think the biggest takeaways from it were, uh, man, that that Donaldson home run was kind of frustrating too because, like, I didn't think that was an awful pitch. It definitely wasn't where he wanted it. He threw a sinker, and 
the way that his sinker moves on righties is it has a way to like eat hitters up and like come in on the hands, right? And just the, the, the way that that specific pitch started out over the plate and then Donaldson was out in front of it because it was an inside pitch and it kind of just went down and, and instead of going in on the hands, it went down and kind of went right on the barrel of the bat. So I, I didn't even think that one, you know, you kind of just tip your cap. And you're like, you know, heck of a piece of hitting by a, by a former MVP, even if he's not what he once was. Um, and, and you just kind of, yeah, tip your cap and move on. But that was the only hit he gave up. He had one walk. Those were the only two base runners and almost went five innings. So what, like at the beginning of spring, what did we say on here about Turnbull, right? Like the big thing was, Let's just see Turnbull slowly progress and get stretched out more and more and more. That's pretty much all, all we've asked of, of Turnbull is just go further and further into games and look better for longer, it, 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 further and further into spring training games. And he's done that. You know, he's almost going five innings now. He'll probably have one start left, I would imagine. Uh, and then I'm pretty interested in how early in the regular season they're going to turn to him. You know, just based off pure talent, I mean, I don't know. I'm very high on Turnbull. I don't want to get, like, ahead of myself and say something crazy. But I, I – if you assume – excuse me. If you assume full health of everybody in the rotation, I'd probably throw him out there, like, day two. Like, he would probably be my my second guy. But if you're going to, again, like, you know, maybe start it off a little slower. He's only going to go four or five innings for – whatever, April, and then kind of progress him as it goes on, then sure, you know, knock him down to three or four. But um, at his best, I think he, he has the potential to be just straight up the best starting pitcher in this uh, in this rotation at the moment. So uh, we'll, we'll see. The, the other takeaway, slider, through the slider a lot in this one. Now, 39% of all of his pitches in this game were the slider. 24% uh, were the four-seam fastball and 22% were that sinker. So, uh something to to take note of as well you know somebody we, we did his player preview uh last week maybe maybe even two weeks ago by now I don't know uh time's a construct but uh in that preview you know we talked so much about the the difference between his secondary pitches and I think that 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 is something not that he's going to go out there and throw more sliders than any other pitch this season or anything like that uh you know more than his fastball you know from start to start but if the slider truly becomes like a, hey, I'm going to throw this 30, 35% of the time and not feel bad about it, I wouldn't feel bad about it either, Spence. I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't. It's a really nice pitch you got there. Um, okay, let's talk about Will Vest. Um, this might be the biggest story of the game, to be honest with you, like in a weird way, just because like we're – I got a weird like piece of my hair is just like sticking up there. Um, just because Will Vest is – uh, I, I tried to get ahead of the curve a little bit, no pun intended, like earlier in the spring. And I, I tried to come on here and be like, hey, a lot of bullpen jobs are up for grabs. I don't know why in any everyone's like roster projections, it's just like a foregone conclusion and assumption that Will Vest is going to be on this team. And unfortunately, his play, like I want every Tiger to do well ever. Um, but unfortunately, his play, like in the spring, he's got a 20-something ERA. And just so... Uh, it, it, it hasn't been a very good spring for him. Like objectively, it, it really hasn't. And so this is just a, a, another on a long stretch here that we're going on of just poor Will Vest performances. Um, and yeah, at this point, I'm pretty confident that if the season started tomorrow, Will Vest would not be on this uh, major league roster. And honestly, like, again, unfortunately, no, nor should he be. Uh, I think he'll start in Toledo. Uh, I think he'll make some adjustments. And if he does play well, he'll be back. Like, you know, it's not a not an end-all, be-all thing. I, I can almost promise you, assuming health, uh, that he will pitch out of the Tigers' bullpen at some point this season. I'm, I'm fairly confident in that, uh, as I've said about a lot of pitchers so far this spring, right? Like, it's not like we're only going to have eight relievers all season. Uh, but I think it's, it's pretty clear at this point, or at least the most clear it's been, I guess we'll put it that way, that that his odds of making this opening day roster are uh, getting thinner and thinner as the spring goes along, unfortunately. All right, we'll talk about Tyler Alexander, who's another guy who hasn't had a really great spring, but I thought looks pretty good on Tuesday. We'll do that right after I tell you all about our friends over at FanDuel. 
You guessed it. We love talking about FanDuel. The tournament is heating up, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Crazy. We're already seeing like head coaches, uh, like of Cinderella teams, leave. And, you know, Patino obviously has his own thing, and he's leaving Iona, but then Iona's replacing him with the head coach from the 16 seed that won. Like, just absolute mayhem in the college basketball world, as every March always is. But uh, go to FanDuel. And new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet does not win, we still got a lot of the tournament to go, right? And you can get in on the action with FanDuel. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe. It's secure. It's super easy to use. And you can bet on everything. Money line, point scores, three-pointers drained, et cetera. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets at the ch- for the chance of a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I greatly appreciate y'all. Um, okay, let's get right back into this game again. Like more notes than I feel like usual, maybe. Like I, I had just had a lot of takeaways from this baseball game for some reason. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why, but I, I was very, I don't think I was like more observant than usual. But for some reason, I, I just... I honestly, I think it's probably just the timing. Like this is a, we, we played a good baseball team that played a lot of their good baseball players and were a week away from spring training being over. Like we got to make some decisions here. And so maybe it's just like every game from here on out, I'm going to have more takeaways just because it's kind of crunch time in that regard. But um, let's talk Tyler Alexander. I thought this was a pretty solid outing. Uh, I think he... Man, like it's unfortunate because again he's another guy where I feel like that's only the second time I've said that all spring like he's had five six seven appearances and I, I think this is literally only the second one that I've been like oh he looked really sharp there um, but he did he, he looked good in this one and we'll gladly take it um, the, the interesting thing to me with uh, for me with him on this one was uh, of all the pitches he threw only six combined variations of fastballs, not even just like four seam or two seam or whatever, like all variations of fastball, which he throws a cutter and a sinker, only six total between those two pitches as a whole, whereas he threw seven change-ups and 10 sliders. So was big on the secondary. The change-up looked beautiful. He got a couple of swings and misses on it. One was for a third strike. Uh, he, he looked really solid with his secondary stuff. So I don't know what to make of it. I don't know if that means that his secondary stuff is just working better than the fastball stuff, and he's just not afraid to kind of throw it right now. If it's part of just us of ramping up to the regular season, uh, if it's an adjustment that he made, I'm not sure, but I really liked what I saw today. So if that's kind of like the new look, Tyler Alexander, where it's just going to be a, uh, you know, Miguel Diaz kind of kind of did the same thing this spring, where it was just all change ups all the time, and it worked great for him. We'll see what happens in the regular season, obviously, but uh, definitely something I noticed in a big, I was like, man, he is only throwing changeups and sliders. This is kind of crazy. And um, that, that kind of stuck through his entire outing when it was a very good outing, didn't allow a run and had a couple of strikeouts. So um, yeah, good, good to see a good outing from Tyler Alexander. Uh, Jose Cisnero stuff looks pretty solid. I think it's probably the best his stuff has looked all spring in my eyes, to be completely honest with you. Uh, still has some command issues. I think he walked a batter. That I really want to see ironed out. Last year was just so weird. Like he, under the radar, I've said this before on this show, but like very sneakily, Jose Cisnero has been like the best reliever on this team from 2020 till like last year. Like very, very under the radar. He was like pretty comfortably our best. And like him or Soto was like pretty indisputably our best reliever across those like two or three seasons as a whole. And so last year getting hurt was obviously a big blow. He was just a very rare, like, Alavila find that was really solid. Um, and last year, when he came back from the injury, wasn't allowing runs. We talked about the anomaly that was Jose Cisnero all the time on this show. He wasn't allowing runs, but he was walking people like crazy. Like, it was his job. Like, we were paying him to walk people. It was insane. Uh, so that's like the biggest thing for me for Jose Cisneros just here. So like cut the walk numbers down and, and we'll be pretty happy with 
the type of pitcher we got there because we've seen the peaks. Like, I want to say 2021 was that the year he made like 60 appearances or something insane and was really solid until like September. He kind of got tired and blew up a little bit. I like he's he, he, he's a good pitcher when he's on. So uh, that's definitely command is a big thing there. Let's get into the offense. I, I, maybe that's it. Maybe this game just had like all MLB caliber pitchers there until the very end that are all like on the bubble. So I had a lot to say about all of them. Maybe let's talk about the offense though. Uh, everyone's favorite storyline, Kerry Carpenter uh, versus uh, not, I don't want to say versus. I really don't. Uh, Kerry Carpenter's campaign to get the fourth outfield spot. It's a home run. It wasn't on a fastball either. It was on a hanging changeup uh, from Severino. He crushed it, man. And I think Jason Beck said that all three of Carpenter's home runs this year are off the Yankees and two of them were off Severino. So I guess take take with that what you will. Maybe he just owns one guy. But that slugging percentage is hard to ignore, man. His slugging percentage in the spring is now very high. He is, you know, like he, he's going to have his strikeouts. He's not the 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 best on the base pass or in the field or anything, but man, that dude has some pop. And when he hits the ball, he hits the ball. He's got a beautiful swing, a beautiful power power stroke. I guess uh, it's gonna it's making it tough. It's making it real tough. That that fourth outfield spot is something. Obviously, we're talking about it pretty much every day. I couldn't even tell you the last time on this show we didn't mention at least for like 30 seconds the fourth outfield race so uh he's certainly right in the mix there and, and i i you know he's probably first or second depending on who you ask so I'm not going to jump to any conclusions don't want to just come on here and change my opinion every single day based on you know the most recent spring performance but we're keeping an eye on it that's for darn sure austin meadows had a really hard hit ball the double line drive uh, over 100 miles an hour exit velo good to see still want him to lift the ball a little bit more but we'll take what we can get jonathan scope uh, had a hit. It was a very hard hit ball. Laser and drew a walk. You know, we we can we can hope, <laughs> we can hope that that that's going to lead to to some more production from him. But uh, it's just been so long since we've seen him like hit a ball hard or like really hit a ball with any amount of like I don't know intensity, aggressiveness, like period. So just seeing him hit a baseball hard was, was nice. And then the walk, I, you know, he's not going to draw walks, whatever. So like that, that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of a whatever, but nice to see. He also played first base in this game, which I think should not be ignored either. I think they're going to try a lot of people out as that like safety valve first base option, but Torkelson's been really good in the spring. So hopefully that, that storyline kind of dwindles as we get further and further into the season and Torque can just play there every day. But uh, Jonathan Scope finally with a really hard hit ball. Ryan Kreidler with a couple of hits in this one. His spring stats are now like not that bad. Like he's got an OPS in the mid-700s. He had a really slow start, but he, he has crawled his way back into being a, a having a pretty solid offensive uh, spring campaign. I, I, you know, he'll be in the mix for that utility spot. Uh, he got a look at – where did he play today? Short, I believe. And then Zach Short, who we'll talk about in a second, played third. Um, but, but yeah, you know, I I still would have Kreidler starting off the season in the minors, I think, if the season started today. But that's more so like, you know, you can start him in the minors. He can be an actual starter in Toledo. And then if he hits really well, you can call him back up. Like, I I, I don't know. I, a lot of people say this in my comment section all the time, and I, I, I don't ignore this take, and I don't I ignore it, like at all. Like I completely understand where everybody's coming from in the sense of like, you know, if Jonathan Scope just wasn't on the team, I feel like that would make a lot of these a lot easier, and you could earmark more at bats for young players and, and whatnot. But I think you kind of just have to see it through at least for the first couple of months to see if you're going to get any trade value anything for him um but i i see those comments i hear those comments we've talked about that possibility and i i agree i i like i, I don't disagree with the take um but i i just don't see that happening yeah i don't know it's a tough situation but uh the season starts today yeah i'd still have cry down there Cesar Hernandez, really the first game all spring that I was like, wow, that was not a very good performance. It, like three pitch strikeout, chased way out of the zone for a second strikeout. Um, just kind of didn't look very good in the batter's box, but it's 
the first time I've said that literally all spring and we're a week away from spring training ending. So I still like Cesar Hernandez and kind of want him on my baseball team on opening day. Zach Short, like I said earlier, started the game at third base. Uh, he got another walk, got a look at third. He's getting a look at a bunch of different positions. I, I still don't have Zach Short on my major league roster on opening day either, but I know that there's like a wave. I, I, you know, I go on the internet. I, there, there's a nice little pocket of, of, of people that, the, the Zach short to make the opening day roster movement is in full effect. And um, I, I'm not there. I'm not a huge Zach short guy, to be honest with you. But um, I, I, we've talked about it a lot. The profile really does fit what, what Scott Harris is trying to do. So I, I don't, I don't know. We got a week left. We have a lot of question marks still with a week left in the season, a lot. So we, we will certainly continue talking about all of them. Uh, let's talk about Matt Manning. Let's do his player preview. We've almost gone through the entire roster of player previews, so that's kind of exciting. That means baseball's here, baby. Uh, so let's talk about him. But first, I got to tell y'all about our friends over at Ultimate Pro Baseball GM. I'm really geeked out, like in the nerdiest way possible, about our new sponsor and partner of today's episode. It's the Ultimate Baseball GM. If you've ever dreamed of being an MLB GM and managing your professional baseball franchise, well, your dream can come true, and this is the game for you. Manage every strategic aspect of the game, play through the season, lead your team to glory. You're responsible for hiring the right coaches, managing team finances, scouting and drafting players, managing difficult personalities, navigating your franchise through free agency, and all the ups and downs of the season trade deadline, uh, I mean, waivers, et cetera, you name it, you're in control. All this is in a challenging, realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want, when you want. Locked on Tigers listeners also getting a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo code locked on in the game store to make sure. So make sure you check it out. That's locked on in all caps. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up on app stores. That's probaseballgm.com, Ultimate Baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment, Locked on Tigers. Um, the sun, man, this is just brutal. I... Oh ridiculous i hope that the audio quality is better today sincerely i i i i uh i i don't yeah not not a fan of that situation very very sorry but um i'm hoping that today's is better i adjusted some stuff so uh we're trying to make adjustments if it's not we'll we'll keep pushing th through through the week and, and i'll keep trying to do the best i can with it um okay let's talk matt manning all right Matt Manning player preview, one of the bigger names we have left, uh, to be honest, of all of the players we still have yet to do player previews of. Matt Manning, one of the, not only of that list, but just of the entire roster, he's quickly becoming one of the more controversial players within this organization because everybody has such varying opinions on where they stand with his future in the in the club, Right. Like there's some people that are still very much of the belief that like Matt Manning has the potential to literally be an ace. And then there are some people that are like, have you seen what he has done? He is not even going to be a starter when this team's in the playoffs again. And like everything in between. Okay. So it's, it, it's a very, very fascinating conversation to, to kind of preview and do a deep dive on Manning. Let's just start with just taking a look at his stats, okay? So when looking at Matt Manning's year last year, it was just 12 starts because he got hurt for a lot of the season, remember? And then, like, he tried to rush back, and he didn't tell anyone, and then he got, like, dehydrated one day. And uh, just, like, it was – it's so crazy how that storyline in any other year would have been, like, one of the biggest ones. But because literally everything went catastrophically wrong for this baseball team last year, that was, like, the eighth most ridiculous thing to happen. But any other year it would have been at the top – um, so he threw 63 innings and 12 starts, had a 6.86 K per nine, which is pretty low, but only a 2.71 walk per nine, did not give up very many homers, uh, had a 3.43 ERA, uh, and was worth one win, according to Fangraph's war. Uh, his projective stats were a little bit higher. I mean, he had a four expected ERA, a 3.78 FIP, 
and a 437 x XFIP. So depending on which one of those you like, you know, there are some that say maybe his ERA should have been a little higher, but that's not bad. Really, that's probably just because he wasn't getting strikeouts. So like, you know, if you're a, more of a pitch to contact pitcher, that's, you know, those projective stats are usually going to be higher than the ERA. There's two big things. Like, comfortably, the two biggest things. Maybe even, debatably, the only two things outside of just staying healthy for a full season. On on Matt Manning's radar for me this year are the development of secondary pitches and the command of the four-seam fastball. Boom, boom. I don't even care about really anything else. Because when the fastball command was working, Matt Manning was working and like, let's go over his – let me see if I can find it here really quickly. I'm sorry. I should have had this prepared. Matt Manning's – okay, four-seamer run value. So this is Baseball Savant, free. Anybody can go on it. So we love the website. We love Baseball Savant here, okay? All of his pitches last year he recorded, according to Savant, a four-seam, a slider, a curveball, a sinker, and a changeup. The run value, obviously for hitters you want that to be positive. For pitchers you want that to be negative. You don't want to give up runs. The run value that's calculated with their formula, changeup was a plus two, sinker minus one, curveball plus two, slider minus one, four seam fastball, negative eight run value. It was a like legitimately lethal pitch. It was great. And it had its ups and downs with velocity. And we came on here and we're like, why is one day it's 90 and the next it's 97? I'm so confused. But Throughout the course of the season, and and like, you know, we threw it 510 times. It's not a tiny sample size. That's very, very solid value right there. Batting average against the four-seam fastball, 198. Everything else, 243, 10, 235, 364. His slug against his changeup was almost 1,000. Not his OPS, his slug. Like, everything else, what was... Hit pretty comfortably the slider we'll talk about in a second. But that four-seam fastball, even though it wasn't like whiffed on really a ton or anything, was not hit very hard and was a very, very effective pitch for Matt Manning. So four-seam fastball command, if he has that command, he is going to give you a solid out. He just is because he's going to throw it over 50% of the time like he did last year, and still no one's going to be able to hit it. We, we There's so many pitchers, last year especially, that we talked about at length that were just able to kind of throw fastballs all over the Tigers, and it it didn't even really matter. And so Matt Manning kind of developing into that fastball first, but the next part is a really good secondary pitches, and that's something that we still kind of need him to develop. So last season, he threw 23% sliders, 10% curveballs, 7.5% sinker, and 7.5% changeup, again, with 51.5% four-seam fastballs. So uh, the the slider, I think, is everyone's, like, clubhouse leader for, like, potential secondary pitch. But that curveball was advertised heavily when he was in the minors and something that I'm still kind of keeping an eye out for as well. Um, but the slider, you know, it, it had decent swing and miss numbers like the it was comfortably his best swing and miss pitch uh, of his repertoire of pitches that he threw relatively frequently um but uh, you know did have some home runs against it and whatnot so that's the biggest thing and, and so far in the spring he hasn't had anything the fastball command's been all over the place until his last start his last start was really solid but fastball command was all over the place secondary pitches uh just don't have any command or feel for them so far in the spring Again, until his last start. His last start was the first time the secondary pitches were working. The curveball was working really well in that one. And the fastball looked really good and lively. And it was a good, solid, fine outing. In his last spring training start, we really need to see that again. Really, really badly. And A.J. Hinch even said, like, kind of publicly, which is crazy to me, he was just like, yeah, man, Manning knows how important these starts are. We need to see something out of him or else, like, he's not going to be here. (laughs) So that's slightly paraphrased phrase, but, like, really not that much. So those are are two of the biggest things I'm looking for for Manning. Uh, A couple small things, just like fun little tidbits to just throw in there. Uh, I think maybe we're getting, at one point last year, we were a little bit too predictable with the first pitch fastball strike. Uh, His OPS against on his first pitch was over 900. And I think that that was because his fastball was working and he wanted to get ahead in the count because that's what this organization wants to do, period, and still does, even with the new regime. 
Um, and so I think we got a little too predictable with like, hey, it's just, just going to be a fastball in the strike zone no matter what. Just see if you can hit it. Yeah, OPS again of, of over 900. It was like 902 or something uh, on first pitches. And then batters that let off an inning, 862 OPS against. I think that's a similar mindset. Oh, I want to start off the inning with a strike. Let's just throw a fastball in there. And I think, you know, some damage was done in that regard. Now, uh, things that he did really well at last year, if you're looking at clutch situations, runners in scoring position, two outs, runners in scoring position, high leverage in general, unbelievable numbers. Like, and, and small-ish sample size, not too many of, of those, and obviously only started in 12 games and didn't even throw 70 innings, but was very, very solid. His opponent's numbers in those high leverage situations was like, for some of them, like sub 400 OPSs, like just crazy, crazy good numbers. Um, so nice to see that. And, and if he can maintain that, like, oh, leadoff runner gets on, but it's no big deal because I'm good with runners in scoring position. That's awesome. Let's let's wrap this up, though. This is pretty comfortably, I said this early in the spring, the most important season in Matt Manning's life. And I, I'm not trying to put, like, unnecessary pressure on anyone, um, but it's it's pretty painfully obvious that that is the truth. This is, and I pointed this out earlier too, like, believe it or not, this will already be the third Major League Baseball season that Matt Manning has pitched in uh, as a Tiger, I guess, but period. Like, this will be his third Major League season, or third season in which he has pitched at the MLB level, I should say. It's not his third full season um, with the injuries and then getting called up in the middle of his of his rookie campaign. So, like, this is not like a oh, you know, young prospect, we're just going to see what he's got and we'll try to iron stuff out later and let's look for the raw potential. Like, no, we, we need results now. We're at that point. And he hadn't looked good in the spring up until his last start. I think a lot of the fan base is very quickly starting to sour on Matt Manning. And it's due to the inconsistent fastball velocity across his entire major league career. Uh, no true secondary pitch yet we talked about, even though the slider looks like it could still very much develop into that. But even then, you're talking about a two-pitch starter? Those don't really exist these days. Like, to be a legit starter in, in 2023, most people need three good pitches. So, like, even if you're like, you know what, you're wrong. This The slider is really good. It's going to be good. Okay, great. That's fine. Now you have two solid pitches. How are you going to develop a third? Like that's still developing a secondary pitch, whether it's the the, the curve or the change or whatever. He still needs a, another solid pitch. And the slider is going to be the pitch he throws the the second most comfortably, right? That That's going to maintain. And it was his most whiffed on pitch and everything, and that's fine. But we need another pitch to develop. Um, and uh, you can see the intangibles are there. Like you can see when he goes out there and he's on his game, you understand. You're like, wow, this is like why he was so highly touted and why people thought he was going to have such a high ceiling and whatnot. But th this is it. This is, this is the year it's really, it's time to see in a full real season of Matthew Manning, what type of pitcher he is. And if we can really pencil him in as a starter in this rotation, going forward or not. And I think that's another reason why I'm fairly confident, no matter what he kind of did in the spring. Now, if he's just awful, maybe that's different. But, you know, I, I think the earmarking at bats for young players goes for pitchers and innings pitched as well. And I, I think Scott Harris wants to see what he has in Matt Manning. And this is, this is like the, uh, as a buddy of mine says, this is the cliff here, right? This is where we see he's either going to fall off or he's going to rise. And so, uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Very, very important season for Matt Manning. And uh, I can't wait for Tigers baseball, and I can't wait for uh, to, to, to watch Matt Manning pitch, to be honest. Those must must watch in a good or bad, no matter the connotation. That That's exciting stuff. So, okay. I think that's all I got. Thanks for making Lockdown Tigers your first listen every single day. For your next listen, check on the Lockdown Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Win your fantasy league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Find Lockdown Fantasy Baseball everywhere you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I think that's everything. Again, I'm going to apologize for the millionth time. I'm so sorry about the audio quality and, and video quality and whatever. Yesterday it was internet. I'm, I'm hoping that the adjustments I made today 
you know, I'm, I'm out here making adjustments too. Okay. And I hope that, uh, I hope that it, it made the product a little bit better today. Just got to get through the week. Um, I appreciate y'all though. Yeah. Everyone was so nice about it. <laughs> Everybody was like, Hey, like <laughs> that sucked. And I literally couldn't listen to it, but you're great. You guys are so nice. I really appreciate all of you. Um, yeah, greatly. Seriously. So, so beyond grateful for the community we've kind of created over the last couple of years here. Um, all right to the moon. Let's keep, let's keep rolling. Opening day right around the corner, baby. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope, and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Go Tigers.